connected to the leg bone. The leg bone's connected to the knee bone. The knee bone's connected to the thigh bone. Doing the skeleton dance. Hi, my name is Ben Buehler. I'm a second year student at Northwestern University Physical Therapy and Human Movement Sciences program. I, along with my colleagues Carla Lopez and Lindsay Garmerian, will be demonstrating and discussing the Thompson test for Achilles tendon rupture, also known as the Simmons test or the calf squeeze test. The Thompson test assesses the integrity of the Achilles tendon. The Achilles tendon attaches the gastrocnemius and the soleus to the posterior surface of the calcaneus. Squeezing the gastroc causes it to compress and move proximally, which in turn causes the Achilles tendon to pull on the calcaneus and plantar flex the ankle. Scott and Chalabi in a cadaver study found that squeezing the calf caused the gastroc to actually bow away from the tibia, causing plantar flexion. There was no axial movement of the soleus and the gastroc muscle belly moved proximally. The posterior bowing of the calf tendons is the primary cause of the ankle plantar flexion, while the superior displacement of the gastrocnemius also contributes. The tape is a representation of the gastrosoleus complex. Distally, we would have the Achilles tendon where it attaches to the calcaneus. During the test, when it's squeezed, the gastrosoleus complex actually bows posteriorly and moves slightly superiorly, causing plantar flexion of the foot. The indication for the Thompson test is probable Achilles tendon rupture. There are no documented contraindications for the test. However, you should follow your informed clinical judgment and only perform the test if you feel it is safe to do so for the patient and for the physical therapist. A study by Mafuli in 1998 determined that the specificity of the Thompson test is 0.93 and that the sensitivity is 0.96. Additionally, in 2012, Garris et al. demonstrated that MRI may be unnecessary for diagnosing acute Achilles tendon ruptures. Garris determined that a combination of the Thompson test along with two other physical exam measurements, examination of plantar flexion, resting tension, and palpation of the Achilles tendon has a very high sensitivity. He determined that a positive Thompson test decreased resting tension and a palpable defect has a 100% sensitivity at diagnosing Achilles tendon rupture. The potential outcomes for this test are either positive or negative. The test is positive if there is an absence of plantar flexion which indicates complete rupture of the Achilles tendon. The test is negative if the ankle plantar flexes which indicates that the Achilles tendon is intact. Additionally, a partial Achilles tendon rupture can result in a negative Thompson test finding. The therapist should be positioned so that they're on the level of the patient, using good biomechanics so they're not hunched over them. You also want to make sure that you're in a good position to see the plantar flexion of the foot when you apply the force. One position for this test is with the patient in prone on a table. The table provides a stabilizing force for the leg not to move when you actually administer the squeeze. With this position as well, you want to make sure the feet are off the end of the table and that the passive range of motion is there. So I will check that first. You plantar flex and dorsiflex the foot to make sure that they have the passive range of motion. So when you squeeze the muscle belly, it can go through that range. The goal is to go into the middle third of the gastroc soleus complex and then find the area of the widest girth, go just inferior to that, and apply a firm yet comfortable squeeze with the patient relaxed. So relax for me. Give a firm squeeze between your thumb and your fingers with the direction of the force going into the middle of the muscle belly with your fingers and thumbs surrounding it. What that does to the muscle is it actually pushes it superiorly slightly, which then pulls on the Achilles tendon, which pulls on the foot, and from there we see plantar flexion. Hi, my name is Ben Beeler. I'm going to be your physical therapist. What we're going to do today is we're going to do a test to check the integrity of your Achilles tendons. Because you're having some dysfunction in your right heel, I, what I'm going to do is I'm going to have you lie down on your stomach with your feet actually hanging off the end of the table. What I'm going to do is I'm going to apply a moderate amount of pressure to your muscle belly on your left leg and then on your right. Uh, after that, what you should feel is a gentle squeeze and then I'll release. And then I'll explain the results of the, the test to you. Do you have any questions? No. All right, Carla, I want you to relax for me, okay? I'm going to move your feet a little bit. Good. All right, now I'm going to apply those gentle squeezes I told you about earlier. Just relax for me.
All right, Carla, so with that test, what we found is that both your Achilles tendons are in fact intact. When I squeezed your muscle belly, what I saw is a little bit of plantar flexion in your foot, so the motion that occurs when you actually push a gas pedal down. Uh, when I squeezed it, both your feet moved in that direction, which shows us that it's a negative test and both your Achilles tendons are intact. If the tests were positive, we would have seen no movement in either of your feet. Luckily for you, I saw movement in both feet, which means your Achilles tendon is intact. An alternate position for the Thompson test is kneeling. If the patient can go prone, you can put them up on a plinth near a wall where they can hold themselves and stabilize, or you can use a chair. Otherwise, the test works exactly the same. So this is going to be the same thing we did last time. I just want you to relax for me, all right? In this video, we have discussed and demonstrated the Thompson test for Achilles tendon rupture. This test can be administered easily in the clinic to help the physical therapist determine the plan of care for the patient. connected to the leg bone the leg bones connected to the knee bone the knee bones connected to the thigh bone doing the skeleton dance